Good day, good afternoon, good morning. I hope you're all well and healthy. I have another art tutorial for you today, so I hope you enjoy. Today we're going to be working in the style of Van Gogh. Now, I know you're thinking, you probably might not have many paints around. However, he used to do a lot of work using just ink. So this ink, he used to use a lot of different mark making techniques to depict different textures and tones within, usually, a landscape. Now, my year seven classes are probably getting a little bit familiar with this style of working, and I'd like you to give it another go, looking at your surroundings. So, here is the artwork that I'm gonna show you for today. So I think it's really, really cool the amount of different patterns, the amount of different textures, and the amount of different marks that he's making all on one page. And I'd like you to really try and push that in your artwork today, which means taking your time and controlling that media. I was going to do the landscape that I see outside of my window right here. However, there is kind of a landmark there, and if I show you that, you're probably all gonna know where I live, which is not ideal. Therefore, I'm probably going to do a scene inside of my house. I'm going to do this wall here. I'm going to be drawing this end of my room. So I have the kind of big square wall. I have the sofa, plant, chests, and maybe some books on top. The best thing about art is that we can just take bits out that might be a little bit hard to draw. So we'll see what I can be bothered to draw in a little bit. The things we're going to need today is our pencil and our rubber and just any sort of pen. You could use a biro, maybe a handwriter pen. I have here a really thin kind of felt tip, so I'm going to see how this goes. I might change it later on. So if you are like me and you're going to be drawing the inside of a room, I think the easiest place to start is one wall. Now I am super parallel to that back wall, so I'm just going to draw in that back wall first. It is a nice rectangle. I'd like there to be more floor space than um, ceiling space, so I'm just drawing this box quite near the top. So I'm going to do a diagonal line coming out of here, and one coming out of here. I'd like the angles of these lines to be quite similar, and this is how we're getting the perspective of the room. So it looks everything looks bigger the closer to you you are, and smaller the further away it is. I'd like this to be as accurate as you can, but I'm not up for using rulers and things with this. With Van Gogh's work, it was very free. There was so much emotion involved. So I think that if we are trying to do it super duper accurate, then it might start looking a little bit wrong. Perspective is a pretty funny thing because anything at these two sides are gonna go out, but anything in the middle would come straight forward towards you. And you'll see a little bit with this sofa that I'm just about to draw. So it, everything horizontal can stay nice and straight. But any kind of vertical line, like the back of this sofa, is going to go up across, down, and then this line is probably going to come at a smaller angle. Because I'm sat right in the middle bit here, this angle is much more extreme than the ones near the middle. There you have it. That is the area I'm drawing. I can't actually get it all on one screen, but on my piece of papier, it's looking a bit like this. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just rub out the lines that I'm not needing and maybe go over nice clean non-feathered lines. This isn't particularly about perspective, it's more about the mark making that we're gonna do because most of you hopefully are gonna draw maybe the landscape that you see out of your back garden. I have my drawing, I'm ready to go. So let's pick up those pens and we're gonna start mark making. I've just turned my piece of paper over to maybe test out the pens that I've got slightly. With the marks that we're making, we do want each one to be controlled. So I'm not getting like little flicks on the end of them. I am actually controlling each line that I draw. So I can see that this biro one is quite light. To make it look darker, I'm gonna put my lines closer together. I don't mind if they overlap someone, but only if you want them to. You can use lines, but in a direction. Now Van Gogh was really, really keen on doing this. So he would actually draw grass or water with different directions to it. You want a different mark 
or different direction for each different texture that you come across. So for the white wall, I'm actually going to use my biro using dots. But notice I'm also not going do, 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 do. I'm controlling it, okay? So I'm looking at where I need a dot and I'm placing the dot there. Because even though it's white, it's still got some sort of texture to it that I want to represent. This is a really cool example actually with just the dots. I've just done the walls of my room and as you can see, for the darker green stripe, I've just put the dots a lot more closer together. And then for the even darker one, they're even more close. So it's choosing one kind of pattern for each texture and then changing how far or close together the marks are to determine how dark or light you want the tones to look. I have wooden floorboards so I'm actually going to do the wood effect. Now under here it is pretty dark so I'm actually going to overlap some of these so you can really see the shadow. From Right, that's starting to look pretty mad, I like it. Now this is pretty much the comfiest thing in the room. So I'm gonna try and replicate some Van Gogh famous curved swirl shapes. I'm really just focusing on the marks that I'm making, the direction I'm going, and how close together I'm making the marks. You can see that underneath the pillows and in between, and maybe over here on the back part of the sofa. And oh, no. actually, and this section is the darkest. Okay, so because the pot next to the sofa is curved, I've done curved lines going around. The leaves, I'm literally just doing some sort of um, curly-whirly effect. There's quite a few of them, but as long as I keep the same pattern, it's going to look really cool. And onto the trunks. You can see that there's two different trunks that I have in this room. Now they're quite old, and I'm gonna try and represent that kind of old feel with some long and short dashes. There's a window here, so it's lighter, but it's dark around this side. Therefore, you got it. I ride, I ride, I ride. I have finished my studio bedroom. Added a little bit more detail to the roof, kind of the ceiling, because the ceiling actually kind of has those little like spiky points to it. So I wanted to emphasize that in my drawing. Round here for the blind is quite nice because the blind is the same texture, obviously on the curled bit and the straight bit. So I've done some nice curls and then straights, all the same size. All in all, I think it's actually really successful. I mean, guys, it is so nice outside. Could you go and do one in your garden? If not, you can stay inside and do it like I've just done here. But get creative. We are looking at the mark making, how many different patterns you can use, on different textures, and how close or far apart you have those lines to depict the different tones that you see. But I'd really like to see some of my year sevens giving this a go. Some of the ones before, we may have got a little bit bored and shaded it in, but actually you had one to shade in, and then you had one to do in this style. So, take note, have a look at your surroundings, have a little look at where you might want to do. Mine is literally this. Oh my God, I forgot that there's a picture up in that corner of me, my sisters and my grandma that I didn't put in. Oh, naughty. So, I'm gonna put that in now. I hope to see some of yours on here, if not on Google Classroom. I hope you have a lovely day. I'll try and upload another one for Friday, and I will see you soon. Stay safe, stay well, keep creative. Bye.